Okay, welcome. I'm uh, Chief Matuszewski from the Lake Mills Police Department. I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, the 2016 Jefferson County Law Enforcement Memorial Ceremony. Um, we have a couple distinguished guests with us today. I'd like to uh, recognize State Representative Cody Horlacher. Uh, Mr. Horlacher, can you please uh, raise your hand? Thank you for coming. Also uh, joining us today is the City of Jefferson Mayor Dale Opperman. Mayor Opperman? There he is. And I'll turn the uh, mic over to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you for coming. If everyone can please rise for the posting of the colors in the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the Please remain standing as I invite Jefferson County Sheriff Paul Milbrath to the podium for the invocation. Good morning. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and the opportunity to honor our nation's law enforcement officers. We ask that you bestow upon these men and wisdom, men and women, the wisdom of Solomon and the patience of Job as they perform their duties. Renew their spirits as they act as ministers for right 
be present with their families and loved ones as they cope with fear and uncertainty they live with for their officer safety, especially in these trying times. Lord, we know that you have given us a great command and speak many times to our duty through your holy word. Psalm 82 verses 3 and 4 reminds us of our duty. Give justification to the weak and fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and destitute. Rescue the weak and needy and deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Lastly, Lord, we thank you for all you do to sustain us. May we be truly grateful for our lives and the ability to do our jobs with the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. This year, uh, we chose to recognize two Jefferson County officers that have died in the line of duty from years past. Uh, Deputy William Cooper and Officer David A. McGee, Sr. Deputy William Cooper, age 49, of the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department, was killed in the line of duty on February 8, 1902. On Saturday, February 8, 1902, at approximately 8 p.m., Fred Stevenson, while intoxicated, got into an argument with his wife and threatened to kill her if she moved out. A neighbor heard the argument and contacted law enforcement. Jefferson County Sheriff's Deputy William Cooper and two other officers went to the residence and tried to gain entry, but the doors were locked. Stevenson's told them to leave or he'd kill them. Those present could hear him continue to threaten to kill his wife unless she agreed to stay with him. Deputy Cooper went to the door and demanded that Stevenson cease and open the door. At that time, Stevenson was distracted by a noise at the back door, which led him to believe that police were trying to enter. And at that point, Mrs. Stevenson took the opportunity to run out the front door. As soon as Stevenson found out that his wife had fled, he ran out the front door and saw Deputy Cooper standing there waiting for him. As Stevenson tried to move past Deputy Cooper, he stepped in front of Stevenson and told him to stop. Stevenson replied, keep away or I'll shoot. As Deputy Cooper advanced towards Stevenson to arrest him, he stuck a revolver in Deputy Cooper's chest and fired. As Deputy Cooper fell to the ground, fatally wounded, the other officers approached Stevenson in an attempt to arrest him. Stevenson aimed his revolver at the officers and told them to let him go or he'd kill them too. Stevenson then retreated and barricaded himself inside a nearby residence. Later that day, he surrendered to the sheriff and was convicted of Deputy Cooper's murder. Patrolman David A. McGee, Sr., age 38, Fort Atkinson Police Department, died in the line of duty on April 9, 1968. On April 9, 1968, Officer David McGee drowned while attempting to rescue a teenage boy who had fallen into the Rock River from the Northwestern Railroad Trestle in downtown Fort Atkinson. When Officer McGee arrived on scene, he stripped off his gun belt coat and shoes as he ran to the river before jumping in and swimming out to the boy. Officer McGee became exhausted while struggling with the panicking boy and the frigid water and both went under the surface. Both the boy and Officer McGee's bodies were recovered from the river later that same day. Officer McGee had served 14 years with the Fort Atkinson Police Department and was survived by his wife who has since passed and six sons. In recognition of these two heroes 
if we can please take a moment of silence for Patrolman McGee and Deputy Cooper. Our speaker today is retired police lieutenant Brian Murphy of the Oak Creek PD. We're very honored to have uh, Lieutenant Murphy here, and I'll tell you exactly why if you're not familiar with this uh, outstanding individual. Lieutenant Murphy began his career in law enforcement in 1980. After joining the United States Marine Corps, he was assigned to the Correction Battalion at Camp Pendleton, California. He was later assigned to the Marine Security Guard Battalion and was, trans and was stationed at embassies in Kubal, Afghanistan, and Bangkok, Thailand. Upon leaving the Marine Corps in 1985, Lieutenant Murphy began his tenure at the United Nations. He worked in various assignments, including the Control Center, Fire Service, and Armory. While at the United Nations, Lieutenant Murphy provided security to visiting heads of state to include Margaret Thatcher, Mikhail Gorbachev, and President George H.W. Bush. In 1990, Lieutenant Murphy was hired as a jailer with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. He attended Madison Area Technical College and received a certification in corrections and law enforcement before leaving to serve in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Lieutenant Murphy served with Oak Creek Police Department for 22 years. Lieutenant Murphy was a member of the OCPD Emergency Response Unit from 1992 to 2009. He was an entry team member, explosive breacher, and ERU team leader. He was a member of the OCPD Evidence Technician Unit for 15 years and served with the Wisconsin Association for Identification for over 15 years eventually serving on the Board of Directors for five years. Lieutenant Murphy was also an adjunct instructor for LSU, Texas A&M, and New Mexico Tech, and he currently instructs for Waukesha Area Technical College. Lieutenant Murphy holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice and a Master's of Science degree in Organizational Leadership from Marion University. On August 5th, 2012, Lieutenant Murphy was the first responding officer to the Sikh Temple Massacre, which left six dead and three wounded. Upon his arrival on scene, Lieutenant Murphy became involved in a gun battle with a suspect and was shot 15 times. Before the gunman was shot and killed, Lieutenant Murphy, uh, before the gunman was shot and killed, Lieutenant Murphy has been recognized for his heroic actions on both state and national levels. Lieutenant Murphy's awards and commendations include 2005 unit citation for his role in recovery of a child on an Amber Alert, 2005 Distinguished Service Medal for his role in the investigation of a domestic terrorism event, 2010 Award of Excellence for Dedicated Service on the emergency response team. 2013, Oak Creek Police Department, Purple Heart. 2013, Oak Creek Police Medal of Honor. 2013, Wisconsin Association of SWAT Personnel, SWAT Officer of the Year. 2014, Congressional Badge of Bravery. And 2015, Presidential Public Safety Medal of Valor. With this, and with great pride and honor, I invite Lieutenant Murphy to the podium. Good morning. I'm going to keep this relatively short because having worn that uniform, standing in the sun at parade rest with the sun beating down on it is never fun, so I'm not gonna beat them up too bad. Although I could go on for an hour, maybe two. 
three if I felt like it, but um, on August 5th, 2012, it's like any other day. It's uh, a beautiful Sunday. I'm driving out here today and I'm looking at the weather and I'm thinking, this is an awful lot like it was on August 5th. And the only difference is I had a job to do then. And my job, like your job, was to provide a service to the community. We never know how things are going to work out when we strap on our uniforms and head to work. We never know what call is going to come our way. But listening to the chief talk about the two officers who died in the line of duty, all I know is that there is no other occupation in the civilian world that asks you to run in when people are running away. In today's media, we're looked at almost as pariahs all of a sudden. And part of it has to do with lack of knowledge. It's 53 million contacts police officers have with civilians every year. 53 million. Of those, one one thousandths of one percent are deadly force encounters. That's it. All those other encounters are where we're assisting people. When the officer dove into the Rock River to save that child, I'm sure he never thought twice about it. I'm sure when the deputy rolled up on that domestic, like we always roll up on domestics, our thought wasn't on getting killed, but on saving the woman who was inside. All these things that are done by law enforcement every single day of the week, 24 hours a day, are what should keep you going. That will, that drive, that resiliency is to know that you are going to make a difference in a person's life. August 5th, 2012 was my off day. I like to think of it as a Murphy's Law event. It's my off day and my trade with my sergeant was because his son was going to graduate from ROTC. And I thought, well, it's a Sunday in Oak Creek, what's going to happen? And I was a little bit wrong. And that's not unusual, as Laurie Hogan and Jeff Park will tell you, usually in my time in, Oak, in Jefferson was, I was wrong a lot. Uh, but I had a good line of crap, so I was able to talk my way through a lot. But I don't want to lighten the fact that whether it's August 5th or it's happening right now, every day I couldn't be prouder of the fact that I belong to the law enforcement community. I was in Montgomery, Alabama yesterday at a law enforcement memorial, and I was pretty much doing the same type talk, and I looked over, and in the front row was a young woman, and next to her was her two-year-old child, and to the other side was a woman who had to have been her mother. They, they looked very much alike, and they were both crying. And I found out later her husband had been killed in the line of duty the year before. He was going to a robbery call and was T-boned by an 18-wheeler and killed. And I talked to the man's, the officer who died, I talked to his dad after the ceremony. And I want all of you officers who are out there to understand this. Because I guarantee you the officer who died never realized this simple fact. That officer's father came to me and he said, Brian, after my son died, I received letter after letter from people who my son had come in contact with. Some he had even arrested. And he had treated them all with respect. And he had treated them all fairly. And for that, all of them, including the people that he arrested, wanted to thank their father for raising a son who did such a wonderful job. 
And I thought to myself, that's the best you can do as an officer. It's the best job you're going to do today is to treat people with respect. It's the only way we're going to get it in return. Sheriff Milbrats, I actually had that same psalm on my phone, and I was going to use it, so thanks for stealing my thunder on that one. <laughs> but I did learn this, and you see it quite often, and I think as law enforcement, we get absorbed sometime in the chaos and the maelstrom around us and don't realize how close we are to God. And it says clearly, in the Bible, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the children of God. And that's what you are. God holds you close, God holds you near, and sometimes when some maniac is standing over you, trying to turn you into a human lawn sprinkler, God's looking out for you and lets you stay. I miss my job as a law enforcement officer. I miss the excitement, I miss the camaraderie, I miss the bonding. But I also miss the opportunity to help someone when they're at their lowest point now in time. Knowing that I was able to provide some comfort for someone who was a victim of a domestic violence or making proper notification for someone whose loved one had died and knowing that those people felt better because I did my job, I miss that. I'm going to leave you with one last thing because I think this is the most overlooked aspect in all of law enforcement. And that's your loved ones. Your family is there with you all the time. We get wrapped up in what I'm doing on the job and I got a call out and I went here and I did that. But your loved one, your husband, your wife, your children are with you on those calls. Don't lose sight of that fact. And every once in a while, God reminds us and humbles us and says, the ribbons and the medals and the accolades go to the officer, but it's the wife, the husband, and the children who allow them to do their job to the best of their ability as well. I learned all about humility when I got home from the hospital and as a grown man, former SWAT operator, I had casts on both my hands all the way up to the fingertips. And when you have to sit in the bathroom and knock on the door and have the missus come in and help you out because you can't grab any paper, that's humility. And you realize how much they go through every day to be with you. I said this yesterday in Montgomery and I'm going to say today in Jefferson. When you get the opportunity, you remind your family how much they mean to you. You tell them how much you love them and never walk out that door and go to work without acknowledging that fact. Who knows when the call comes for us, but when it does, please be ready. A man told me last year, he gave me a line that I'll never forget. And he said very simply this, if I told you you had to fight for your life tomorrow, how hard would you train today? We don't know when that happens. And God forbid that it happens to anyone in the presence today. But if it does, be ready, do your job, love your family. Thank you very much. God bless and Godspeed. Thank you, sir. Okay, can I invite uh, Deputy Chief Parker to the podium? As Brian stated, uh, he started his career here in Jefferson County, and we wanted to present him um, with a token of our appreciation and recognition for the sacrifices that he's made. 
It is with great pride that the Jefferson County, Wisconsin Sheriff Office honors and recognizes retired police lieutenant Brian J. Murphy for his heroic and selfless act of courage displayed August 5, 2012 at the Sikh Temple shooting in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. His quick response and exemplary decision making saved many lives that fatal Sunday morning. Lieutenant Brian Murphy, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, is proud to have been the foundation in your long and productive career in law enforcement. Though your time with the Sheriff's Office was short, it was the base in which your professionalism, dedication, and integrity were established, and we are privileged to call you one of our own. Thank you, Brian. Everyone uh, can please rise. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, for the playing of taps. Please remain standing for the color guard. Color guard, please retire the colors. ceremony. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. I also noticed uh, Senator Nass uh, here in the uh, front row. I'd like to recognize him as well. Thank you for coming, sir. I'm sorry we missed you in the beginning. Uh, thanks again to everybody for coming. Uh, for law enforcement uh, officials and invited guests, we'll be reconvening at the fairgrounds for lunch. Thank you and have a nice day.